What's up everyone and welcome back to the comps channel. This video is going to be part of a series of BBS setup videos and this one will be going over the equipment and setup for a power over ethernet BBS in an outdoor enclosure. So join me as we get into it. We're approaching a restricted area. Restricted area is one mile west. Before we get into it, let's talk about the placement of these BBS nodes. These are intended to be installed on nodes at good locations with wide reach. You may remember this example from my first BBS video. The BBS nodes here are all intended to be on towers on top of mountains, and they're in line of sight with the closest BBS node with a good signal. The large message responses from the BBS can be a struggle for multiple hops, and success may vary depending on how large or how well laid out your mesh network is. So just know that the less hops, the better for both the BBS syncing operation and end user operation. With that said, let's go over the components for a BBS node. Now a lot of this stuff is going to be from the previous PoE build, so depending on which route you took with that, you may already be close to being ready to go with turning it into a BBS node. I'm not going to go over a complete PoE build in this video since I've already done a video on that. This video will just show you what you need to add to the previous PoE build to get it working as a BBS. If you haven't seen the PoE build video, I'll link to that in the video description below. If you've already done a PoE build, depending on what PoE build you went with, you're either using a rack PoE module attached to a whiz block, or you're using a PoE splitter. Since we're powering a Raspberry Pi with this PoE build, we're going to need to go with the PoE splitter, and we won't be using a rack PoE module. So if you're just now getting started, be sure to go with the PoE splitter and not the rack PoE module. So we have our enclosure here with the components inside. We have an ethernet cable coming from inside the house, building, or wherever our indoor PoE equipment is. That's going to an ethernet gland, which is going to the PoE splitter. The PoE splitter has a USB power cable, which will go to the Raspberry Pi. This particular PoE splitter is USB-C, but includes a USB-C to micro USB adapter, which we'll need since the Pi Zero uses micro USB. Then the other cable coming from the PoE splitter is our Ethernet cable that also connects to the Raspberry Pi. Then we have our Meshtastic device, which in this case is a rack wireless whiz block, which will provide the radio communication. This is mounted on a new enclosure mount we developed to mount the whiz block and a Raspberry Pi in a stacked configuration to save room. I'll have a link to this along with all the other parts as well in the video description. Speaking of Raspberry Pi, we have a Raspberry Pi Zero 2, which is basically a little computer that the Meshtastic device is going to connect to and communicate with the BBS software. Now there's two versions of the Pi Zero, which is the original and the Pi Zero 2, which is the latest at the time of this video. We're going to be using the Pi Zero 2 for this PoE build. You'll also run into versions of the Raspberry Pi Zero with or without headers. We'll need the version with headers because we're going to be installing a device on top of it that gives us Ethernet access. And finally, we have a micro SD card that the Raspberry Pi will use to run its operating system in software. Now, one thing to note on the Raspberry Pi Zero models, we went with the Pi Zero because the BBS doesn't need all of the processing power that a full-size Raspberry Pi offers. And due to its small size, it fits nicely in the enclosures that we've used in previous videos. One thing that we've run into with the Pi Zero that we've not been able to solve is that the rack wireless whiz block doesn't want to boot up at the same time that the Raspberry Pi boots up. You have to either hit the reset button on the rack device or plug it in after the Raspberry Pi is booted up. My main concern with this is, is when the Meshtastic BBS is deployed on a roof or a tower or wherever, if it loses power, it would require manual intervention to get it up and running again by hitting the reset button on the rack device. Currently, to resolve this concern, we just need a way to ensure that the rack device doesn't lose power in case of a power outage. 
To do this, we can simply have a battery connected to the rack device, so it'll keep running if the power goes out. But now I know many of you went with the PoE build because you live in a climate where you have concerns with the use of a battery in an outdoor enclosure. For those of you like that, using a PoE UPS indoors works as well, and that's what I've been using. You just need to make sure that the UPS supports 48 volt PoE. And I'll include an affiliate link to the one I'm using in the video description below. With that said, let's get everything in the enclosure. Now before going through this process, make sure that you flash the firmware onto the Meshtastic device and flash the Raspberry Pi operating system to the SD card. I'll include a link to the Raspberry Pi flashing and setup video in the video description below. We'll start by installing the new WizBlock and Raspberry Pi mount. I won't cover that in this video as there's already a video with instructions for installing a version of this kit with a battery and one without a battery. I'll include links to both of these in the video description as well. But just be sure to stop before the part where you're mounting the WizBlock and Raspberry Pi as that'll be covered in this video. So we have the ethernet cable from the ethernet gland and we'll want to route this in a sort of horseshoe shape in between the larger standoffs like so. Then we have the PoE splitter and we can go ahead and plug the ethernet cable into that and place it inside the enclosure. After that we can go ahead and secure the whiz block to the mounting kit with the included screws. With that secured into place we can go ahead and connect the lower antenna and the Bluetooth antenna to the connectors on the rack wireless whiz block. Then for this next step we're either going to put on the battery sled and then mount the Raspberry Pi if we're using a battery in the enclosure or we'll just be mounting the Raspberry Pi if we're planning on using a PoE UPS or some other way of ensuring that the system doesn't lose power. With the Raspberry Pi mount in place, we can insert the Ethernet USB hub Pi hat onto the headers of the Raspberry Pi. Once that's in the place, we'll connect the USB ports of the Pi hat and the Raspberry Pi using this micro USB to micro USB connector that comes with the Pi hat. With that in place, we can go ahead and connect the Ethernet cable coming from the PoE splitter to the Ethernet port on the Pi hat. Now we can connect the USB power cable from the PoE splitter to the Raspberry Pi. The splitter has a USB-C cable coming from it, but it comes with a USB-C to micro USB converter, which is what we'll need since the Pi Zero uses micro USB. Then finally we'll plug in a USB cable from the whiz block to the Raspberry Pi, and that completes all of the internal connections. Just be sure to plug everything in and test to ensure everything is working as expected before mounting the enclosure outside. Also be sure to remember what I mentioned earlier about the whiz block and Pi not one to boot up at the same time. You'll need to wait for the Pi to boot up before you plug in the whiz block. Give it about 30 seconds to a minute before plugging it in and you should be fine. Or if you're using a battery in the enclosure, you can just go ahead and plug the battery into the whiz block before powering on the Raspberry Pi and you'll be fine as well. If everything is working as expected, the device is ready for deployment and that'll do it for this video covering the components and putting it all together. Hope you found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so, so you won't miss out on more BBS videos as well as other upcoming projects. Thank you all and have a good one.